Hi there and welcome to this video for Senior Physics on Nuclear Physics. In this video we're going to explore the concept of decay series. Now we already know that when we have a, um, an, equation, a, a, an element which is unstable, it's going to release various particles, those particles being alpha, beta and gamma. Gamma as we know is energy and it has no change on the actual um, change in the uh, element which is produced but the alpha and beta particles will change either the mass, the um, number and as a result will affect the actual type of element which is going to be produced. Now some, uh, some um, uh, elements will break down and they'll break down to produce a fairly stable new element but in other cases we'll get a situation where we'll have an element which will break down through radioactive decay and its daughter element, the, the, the new element that's being produced, will also break down. So it undergoes some radioactive decay. And the daughter element of that undergoes some radioactive decay. And what we get is this subsequent um, situation where we get one equation after another equation after another equation after another equation until the final element becomes stable. Now this can be shown in a graph or a decay series as we can see here. In this situation we've got an element at the top and then we finish off in an element at the bottom. Let's look at the axes so we can understand what the graph shows us. On the left hand side we've got our atomic mass and you'll notice that that's going up in groups of four and I'll talk about that in a few moments. On the horizontal axis we've got the atomic number. Now our atomic number in this case, because of the type of elements that we're dealing with, range from 81 to 92, going up subsequently by one in each case. Now we've got three particles that can be released during radioactive decay from the nucleus. Those three particles are shown in the blue arrow here. We have, on the horizontal side, we've got our positrons, which is a beta particle, which is produced when we've got too many neutrons. So the neutron breaks down and we produce a positron. And then we've got um, an electron. Remember, an electron is going to be produced. Sorry, that's the other way around. Um, when we've got too many neutrons, the neutrons break down, releasing a, um, an electron and as a result leaves a proton behind. Whereas the yellow one, the positron, is basically basically occurs where we've got too many neutrons and as a result that breaks down to produce um, to release that, that that positron so as well as that we've also got an alpha particle which basically is a helium nucleus this is made up of um, two protons and two neutrons remember there's no electrons in this case just two protons two neutrons that changes the um, type of element by uh, two, its atomic number goes down by two, that's why it moves to the left, and the mass actually decreases by four, remembering that we've got two protons, two neutrons, each has a mass of one, so there's our four, and that's why you'll see that the arrow looks like a vector going two to the left and four down. So the resultant thing is that we have changed our atomic number by two, and we have basically decreased the mass by four. So what we then get is a subsequent set of um, nuclear equations all linking together. Each daughter isotope, as I stated, is going to be radioactive. So once it's produced, it will undergo radioactive decay, either releasing positron, a um, electron, or an alpha particle. And all your job is to do is to utilize this decay series to say how many particles are released in the movement from one one element into another. So let's have a look. For example, we've got uranium-238, which is sitting at the top here, and it breaks down initially to um, thorium-234, which is shown in the blue arrow. It does that by releasing an alpha particle. So basically what I would have there is an equation. Uranium-238 goes to produce thorium-234 plus an alpha particle. But if you look at thorium, Thorium then undergoes um, a, a nuclear decay to produce uranium-234 and it releases firstly an electron leaving a proton behind so that produces polonium-234 and that undergoes an, a subsequent um, electron decay 
or beta decay, leaving another proton behind, so it goes to the isotope uranium-234. You'll notice that uran or both the uraniums sitting on the 92 atomic number line because 92 is what makes uranium uranium. So basically what we would then do is put a, um, an equation together showing all the subsequent um, particles which are released. We don't have to put in all the elements unless the question specifically asks us to do so. We have our starting element, we have our finishing element, and in between we have to work out what radioactive particles were released to produce that final um, daughter uh, element. Now eventually we'll see that the radioactive decays will continue until we get down to a stable element. And in this case, the stable element is lead 206. That is basically a nucleus which does not undergo any radioactive decay. It's completely stable, completely happened, and that's where the decay series finishes. So that's how we read the, the, um, the graph. So let's look at um, an example that we can work through. So here we've got the same um, diagram, and what we're going to work out is the equation for writing the nuclear transmutation or change of uranium-234 into polonium-218. So the first thing we need to work out is let's identify where those elements are on the graph. So there's uranium-234 and there's polonium-218. So then we have to look at, well, what's in between? Well, as we go in between, we, we basically state, has it gone to the left? hence produce a, um, a positron, has it gone to the right, hence it's released an electron, or has it dropped down and hence undergone an alpha decay. So as we go from to uranium-234, the first radioactive decay is to um, thorium-230, and that's undergone alpha decay. It's dropped down four and gone to the left two. So it's lost a mass of four and it's lost two protons. So hence the atomic number decreases by two. The thorium then undergoes another alpha decay, then there's another alpha decay, and there's another alpha decay until we get to polonium-218. So four alpha particles have been released in that decay. So we write the equation, uranium-234, is what we started, goes to produce our new element, which is polonium-218, and it releases four alpha particles. Now let's just double check our maths here so that everything's sorted. We know that 234 minus four alpha particles, remember the mass of an, of an alpha particle or a helium nucleus is four. We've lost four of them, so that makes 16. So 234 minus 16 gives me two, a mass of 218. That doesn't tell me the other element yet, but it does give me its mass. Then we look at the bottom side, we've got 92, which is our uranium, and we've lost four lots of two on its atomic number. Remember, alpha particle is four, two for the helium nucleus, so that's eight. So 92 minus eight gives me 84. I then use my periodic table if I didn't know what the element was, but because we're working on the graph, we know that 84 is polonium, so everything matches up. So what we've now got is a completely balanced equation, but we've been using the decay series to determine how many particles have been released during that nuclear decay. Now, obviously, the question, that, that's quite a straightforward question because we're only dealing with um, alpha decay. What I'll do is I will put up some an, an exemplary video where we can use further um, examples to show what happens with um, positron or beta particles. All we've got to try and do is make sure that the left hand side balances with the right hand side and you can you can play with this as many times as you want. So check out that exemplary video on the post on this iTunes U course and uh, I look forward to seeing you again. Bye for now.